throw the questions, and she'll give the short answers too. So we, we want to close out 15 minutes. Can someone take the mic? Brother Daniel, can you pass the mic to someone? Okay. Go ahead. 
Uh, I have a question concerning the organic gardening. Uh, okay. I, my wife and I, we've been doing organic gardening in the States for a while, but the problem we face there, I don't think we face here, but the problem is in America, um, because all of the insects are starving to death, because the food source there is so bad that when you grow organic, I mean, they just eat it up because they're finally getting good food. And I was wondering here, uh, do you have a problem with the pests eating the organic foods? And if so, what types of products can I use that are organic based? Uh, we love a uh, storage box in which we um, store this rice when we are sending it outside. This can be purchased anywhere you know, in a, the agri offices in Ghana. And then sometimes I know what I've been sending stays even at the port for about three months before it sent from. But it gets the seed. So I don't know if the doctors can say something about how to control their seed. Um, as an organic farm, also what I use um, is the nim, uh, the nim oil. Okay, the nim oil with some nim powder um, and some cayenne pepper to really knock them out with a you know one two one two one. Uh, it keeps them at bay. But like you said, they are hungry and they are greedy for good food, and they attack the organic. They take they take attack our kale, our cows, our all the time. And one of the things that we're doing now, we're doing a greenhouse. We just completed a nice greenhouse to keep them at bay also. And this greenhouse is in a shaded area and keep them from jumping over. So we attack them that way. But the nim oil is proven to be very effective. Very effective. With organic farming, uh, you are doing the spiritual work. I'm coming from the spiritual perspective. Any good intention? For our people that have suffered so many years ago, you have a spiritual energy behind you. I know that apart from the neem trees and the new ones Brother David is using, he is also having the energy of putting out there to our people the best of food. And because of that, because of that, Spiritually, you will not lose. There will be an end. Just try. I just want to add quickly to that some of the uh, agricultural seminars that we've been doing as well. Monocropping is part of the problem. That when you have one crop, you are essentially waving a dinner flag and ringing a dinner bell. And so this has been something that the, there has been a shift in as well. And people are also using combinations of uh, the locally made black soap, using uh, liquid, the water from the black soap that's made, that's put on it, as well as the neem seed, the neem seed itself that's being crushed. I found great success with mulching with the neem leaves. I found that that was really helpful in addition to mixing up the produce and not just growing the model crops. So those are some of the things also that we found helpful. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, family, so uh, again, we want to give yourself a round of applause for being here. Yeah, I have one, one more if you don't mind. Go ahead, brother. Uh, and that is uh, bee farming okay. uh, for honey. Okay. Because uh, uh, there's, a, especially in the States, I mean, honey just costs a fortune because they're killing all the bees. Right. So here, is there a need for that, to, to have bee, bee farms and producing honey? Yeah, they're here. Okay. Um, you know, uh, as a bee farmer, you know that you cannot do successful pollination in the absence of one, right? So there are people producing honey in Central Accra, Kumasi, and other areas which may be contaminated because if bees don't get water, they can go to the urinal. Yes. So that is where we indigenous farmers come in. Um, bee farming is needed really here, seriously, because we're telling people to get off the processed sugar. But you need to locate it properly so that you'll be able to get 
the very healthy honey produce. interested in the uh, neem oil, is there a different grade neem that you use for plants as opposed to that that um, humans use? I've heard there might be a different grade or different type of neem that's used for plants. Is it true or not? Well, the neem, you know, they usually, um, they, they cold press it, usually here in Ghana in the north. The cold press uh, is used sometimes for medicinal purpose also. Um, uh, but the, uh, you have to be careful of how it's prepared in, in terms of how you want to use it. Uh, the cold press one for internal uh, and other type of healing, and then sometimes they can they can heat it or they can crush it, and then uh, they can sometimes add to it. So you just have to be uh, know the source, and we have a great source from Tamale for for the nim oil that's cold pressed. Any other questions? Yep. Go ahead. So, thanks, Dr. Sharita. Yes. All right, so you mentioned that the first step when we return our, when we think about returning, should be healing. Since you are a natural kind of doctor, what is the first step you think in that healing process that we should take? Take, take, the, take the trip to um, the Castle Dungeons. Bring your ancestors back home. Make a stay here I, I, and so it came to me that I need to find a way to bring uh, people home to be a, a, a vessel you know that, that can be used to bring people and one of the things uh, I did was uh, the African Culture and Wellness Festival and I made that about healing I made that about um, African culture that's coming um, coming together to learn about ourselves to tell our stories um, and to start the healing process. So, um, so that's the, the first step. Go through the castle dungeons, make your uh, promises and pledges to your um, ancestors, and ask them to guide you every single step of the way. It's no small thing. I didn't. I knew it, and and um, it can be articulated to me, but for me to understand it. In, inside, it, it happened when I came here, and when I was told to do that, something different, you know, came over me. And I really, really know my ancestors are moving with me all the time. And that's what's going to guide you to every other step. Because once you do that, that's the thing. Like, it's when I got that paper and answers like, that's not about you, this is about us, you know, coming back home and, and being with our brothers and sisters. And then, of course, make the make these relationships, you know, with our. Um, I mean, really get some really good friends, you know, here on the grounds. You know, make a, a become part of a family, you know, and the, and the family will find you. Or you find the family. It'll, it'll just be natural. I have family that love you so much. I, I I'm like, you know, I got my citizenship, but I think I want you guys to adopt me. <laughs> and I want to go through the whole everything. I want to be in our family meetings. <laughs> You know, uh, all the different things that go along, you know, with it. You know, so, um, yeah, I, I, that, that's the, the first, you know, few steps in here. Thank you very much. So, again, give yourself a round of applause. Give yourself more love. And I will say, with 
healing, remember that you don't have to die, okay? Uh, and this is no joke, okay? We can live forever. So we have been taught to die and go to heaven or go to hell. We don't have to do that, okay? We can strive to live on this earth until the one bright day when everything is manifested the way we're supposed to, to be living. So don't let them tell you that you got to die at 70 or 60 or 80. Uh, no, 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 no. You just make it to 100 and declare that you're going to get to 101. Take it like that. Take that out of your mind. Okay? Because in the beginning there was no death. So again, give yourself a round of applause. We'd like to ask Dr. Sartre to close this section out. Um, a minute of silence and then we're going to go into the network. Turn up before the Creator. Let's turn up again. We're going to have silence. Are we going to breathe in deeply and see the bright future of the United African family a hundred, two hundred thousand years from now? So it's a shame. Okay, that working time.